Although the tragedy of the fall was because of humanity's lack of faith and obedience to God's word, God was still determined to save his children from sin. Thus, immediately after the fall, God began setting up the environment for central figures to perform successful conditions to lay the foundation for the Messiah. As we saw last time, these conditions were the foundation of faith and the foundation of substance. These conditions were necessary in order to reverse or indemnify what took place at the fall of man, namely, a lack of faith in God's word and an unprincipled reversal by Lucifer, stealing the position that Adam was to have inherited. So, how did God create this environment to reverse the fall in the family of Adam? Well, due to Adam himself causing the disaster of the fall of man, he was unqualified to stand as a central figure to present an acceptable offering of faith. Furthermore, Adam was responsible for the creation of the second unprincipled master, Satan. Consequently, Adam could not present his offering only for God, as Satan also had a direct claim to Adam, and thus a condition to claim the offering. As such, God symbolically divided Adam into two sons, one side representing good and the other side representing evil. By dividing Adam this way, each son had an inclination to serve only one master, reflecting the original principle of creation. But between Cain and Abel, how would God determine who stood in the position represented good or evil? In order to answer that question, we need to look at the process of the fall, as both Cain and Abel are fruits of Eve's love. In the rather shocking video of the fall, we saw that there were two types of illicit sexual relationships in the garden. First, the spiritual sexual fall between Lucifer and Eve, and second, the physical sexual fall between Eve and Adam. Clearly, neither occurrence was part of God's original intention for humanity. However, of the two circumstances, the second sexual fall, although still being unrighteous, was more in line with God's principle of creation since Adam and Eve were to have united after reaching spiritual maturity. On the other hand, Eve's unity with the Archangel was in complete contradiction to the divine plan, since God never intended Eve to have a sexual relationship with the Archangel. Thus, this very sequence of the two falls determined who would stand in their respective positions. The first son, Cain, was to represent the first sexual relationship with the Archangel and Eve. The second son, Abel, was to represent the second sexual fall between Eve and Adam. This is why the ensuing biblical framework of the elder son being less favorable in God's providence is plentiful throughout the scriptures, from Jacob and Esau, Ephraim and Manasseh, Isaac and Ishmael, and more. We will take a look at all of these fascinating examples in a separate video. However, with respect to Cain, Abel, and the relationship with the foundation of substance, we saw that the foundation of substance could only be laid once the events of the fall are played in reverse order by restoration through indemnity. In the garden, Lucifer who was created before Adam should have remained in his proper position and received God's love through Adam. However, the exact opposite happened. Lucifer left his proper position and seduced the woman God had created for his son, Adam. In so doing, Lucifer took a dominant position over Adam, his posterity, and all of creation. Thus, in restoration, the providential figure who is in the archangel's position must overcome their fallen nature and unite with the heavenly central figure. Simply put, Lucifer's side must do what Lucifer could not do, and make a condition to cut off Satan as master, allowing Christ to come on the established bedrock of faith and unity. So now that we understand this framework, let's take a look at the story of Cain and Abel. Quote, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. We see here that both brothers give an offering to God. However, although Abel's offering was regarded, Cain's was rejected. Why did God reject Cain's offering but accept Abel's? 
Some have theorized saying it was because Abel had sacrificed a precious lamb, while Cain had offered only fruits. However, we see other Bible verses that fruits are an acceptable type of offering. The rejection may have been due to Abel offering the firstborn of his flock, while Cain did not give his first fruits of his labor to God. As Cain stood in the position to relate with Satan, this would have been the underlying cause of him to not offer his best to God. Regardless of the motivation or reason, the crucial part of this story is that God did not accept the offering of Cain. Why is this so crucial? Let me explain. With Abel offering his precious lamb to God out of wholehearted faith, he was able to establish the foundation of faith as a central figure standing in for Adam. Now, if the foundation of substance were also established, the Messiah could come on the condition of Cain and Abel, symbolically reversing the fall. This is why God rejecting Cain is so important. God, in an effort to establish the foundation of substance, and thereby the foundation for the Messiah, set up the exact same situation where Lucifer had failed through divine providence. Notice what has happened here. God has recreated the similar scenario of the fall in order for restoration to come about. In relation to Adam before the fall, Lucifer was older than Adam since he had been created before God's son. The process of the fall began because the archangel could not accept that God would favor Adam more than him. Because of this, Lucifer reversed the proper order of creation, stealing the position that Adam should have realized. In restoration, this event must be played in the reverse order. Cain, being the elder brother and thus symbolically standing in the archangel's position, must recognize Abel as God's central figure and unite with him. If he is able to reverse the fallen nature, then Satan will have no basis for which he could remain as master, thereby cutting Satan off and allowing for the foundation of substance to be laid. If I say it in a different way, the birthright that was stolen by Satan at the fall could be brought back to God's side, thereby allowing Christ to come as the second Adam and the Lord of creation. However, as the one standing in the archangel's position, Cain would have a predisposition to relate with Satan. Consequently, God issued a stern warning to Cain, quote, If you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it, unquote. We see here that God desires for Cain to succeed and to do what is right. Although God favored Cain and his offering less than Abel's because of providential reasons, God loved Cain as much as he did Abel. Naturally, Heavenly Father desired that Cain succeed in ruling over sin and uniting with his brother. There was certainly a possibility that Cain could be victorious, evidenced by God's warning to resist and rule over sin. Tragically, however, Cain was overcome by the same emotions that gripped Lucifer, which led to the fall of man. Secretly clenching a rock in his palm, Cain led his brother out into the field and struck him to death. Although God had desired to send the Messiah right after the fall, the murder of Abel not only spelled the death of God's central figure, but also the prolongation of providence until the foundation for the Messiah could be laid. The providence of restoration, centering on Adam's family, had ended in abject failure. Following the failure of unity between Cain and Abel, there resulted two sides in nearly every aspect of humanity a Cain side or Satan side, and an Abel side or God side. Whether it be confined to individuals, extrapolated to nations, or pertaining to world views, everything falls either towards the Cain or Abel side on a spectrum. Humanity, indulging in the same sins that occurred in Adam's family of adultery and murder, spiraled downwards for 1600 years and 10 generations until another opportunity for the foundation to receive the Messiah appeared. Next time, centered on the righteous man named Noah, we will observe the same efforts by God in order to send his son, the Messiah, as quickly as possible to restore humanity. Until then, stay tuned, thank you for watching, and have a very blessed day.